Hi guys, it's been a while. Uh, this is my sixth vlog. I've done a couple of vlogs before. There's been, been, been some changes here in my setups. Um, I'm no longer running the QAV250. I've, uh, I, before I get into that, let's, let's back up. First of all, hi, welcome to the channel. Um, if you haven't seen me before, if you've just subscribed, welcome. I've had a lot of new subscribers, Mario, from RC Shim has featured me on his channel, and I think a lot of you have come from there. Uh, there's other places that have been featuring my videos, and I'm very appreciative of that. So, first off, thank you for that. Thank you for subscribing. Hopefully, I keep your interest. Uh, anyway, so there's been some changes in my setups. Uh, I've gotten rid of the QAV. Well, not really get gotten rid of it. I still have the frame, but I've migrated that over to a new frame. Um, I'm testing a frame from a local pi pilot he designed a 180 frame that fits five inch props so i'll be showing you that at some point um my i've got a complete rebuild of the cine tank that's coming up and i'm going to put that on video hopefully that's my my plan but today what we're doing is we're actually going to build or i'm going to continue building uh the flying cinema x24 that i just bought so I've gotten a little bit of work done on it. I did some work on it last night, and you can see it here. This is the Flying Cinema Cinetank X24. Um, in general, I like the frame. It's, it, it looks like a good frame. I've got some questions about the durability of the, the plate. Um, basically, I'm worried about the flex on the plates. Um, I haven't gotten the top cage on. I, I suspect that's going to help once you get the top plate on and buttoned it down, it will probably help prevent a lot of the, some of the flex. But if it doesn't, I'm going to fashion up a bottom plate and stick it here. So stick a, um, I'm not sure if it's going to be like a 2.5 millimeter carbon fiber plate or something like that, but something to keep it, keep it from flexing. And I'll show you what I mean a little bit later, but Let's get into the build. Um, first off, KISS 24 amp ESCs, Emacs red bottom 2300 kV motors. Um, this are the 2205s. KISS flight controller, I've got a 600 milliwatt uh, Luminaire power switch. Uh, TX5G Pro, it's got a power switch on it, which I hate. I'd, bugs the hell out of me, but I've got that. That's going to go on it. So this is going to be a freestyle machine, and it's got an X4R S-Bus, basically a standard build these days. And yeah, that's about it. That's, that's basically is going to be a simple freestyle machine. It's going to do um, GoPro, GoPro session recording. That's what I'm using now to record you guys. So we're going to continue building building this today, um, I'll probably speed it up so you don't have to watch me and listen to me babble to myself. Anyway, I'm going to put you up here. I've got a little setup here. You can see it. Ooh, a little camera setup, and I think you'll be able to see the, the build while I'm doing it. Hopefully, I've got enough battery for this. I'm probably going to move a little bit and let you settle down, and okay. So, First things first, I'm going to lay out the ESC cable. So I'm going to use three ESC cables because I want the telemetry on this. Um, so this, my basic plan is to cut these in half and see where they're going to fall um, in relation to where the KISS ESC will be. I'll probably... I'm not sure if I'm going to do this, um, if I'm going to solder it or not. Maybe I'll solder it. Um, everything's been going pretty well with my builds, so I'll probably solder it. Solder them direct, cut out as much weight as possible. And, let's see here. Nice and tight this. So this is going to be the front of the craft this here and then we'll see where we can put these in the PWMs go there 
So I want enough space to The idea is to have just enough cable to reach. Mm, okay, I think we're going to solder it direct. Because if not, it will hit the battery cable. And there's a, that's where the battery cable is going to be. So you can see, hopefully you can see, that's not going to work. Cut these to length. We'll go there, and that will go there. And I always leave a little bit of slack when I cut. This is because it, you can always cut it down, but you can never make it longer. So that's one. Over here, uh, yeah, that's not going to work. Because if I remember correctly, I can check the motor plan. Yeah, okay, this is taking a little while to do. So, um, let's see, what else? Where can we do at the moment? I'm going to seal these ESCs with, uh, let's see here, I've got conformal coating, urethane conformal coating that I'll seal the ESCs with and the flight controller, but after, and this is important, after I solder everything up, otherwise the solder won't work. So this is for waterproofing, and this will keep the ESCs from dying if I get a, get a little bit of water in it, hopefully that will lead to a lasting build. Um, let's see. can start depinning the X4R. And we'll hit this with a conformal coating as well after we get everything soldered up. How I do this? How I do this is I typically Take these and cut as close to the board as possible. Yeah, so this here, this just came up. This is PWM4, which needs to go there. And yeah, I've got enough time. It actually goes underneath. I've got enough space. Good. PW11 goes to here. And they'll take it under. That should be enough for that. One, four, two. Goes under one. And what we're going to, need to do is instead of soldering them onto the power, onto this, onto the flight controller first, we're going to solder them onto the ESC. And then we're going to conformal coat the ESCs. So we'll do that first. Then we'll, well, well actually, I've got to check um, motor rotation, and I'll check that on my alien, because I'm not sure which motors should be jumped and not jumped. This will vary from motor to motor. So you really need to check beforehand before you solder anything or well, before you conformal coat. Otherwise, you're going to have to take off the conformal coating. And it's, it's just a pain in the ass. So you don't, you don't really want to do that. So here we go. And we'll tin these up and then solder them. I'm assuming you guys know how to solder. Maybe not.
You take them, remove the sheath, and then give each of the exposed wires a twist. And the reason why you twist is, well, you want the solder to wick in quite well. And also, you don't want little stray strands of wire sticking out. So you twist it, and once you twist it, once the solder wick's in there, you got a good... You make sure you don't have any of these stray strands of wire. Use something a little bit gentler than my claws. These you can buy on Hobby King. Extremely handy, extremely useful. And doing this, my eyes are bad, so I've got a nice little magnifying glass. Let me get in there and see. A little bit of solder on the soldering iron first. That allows heat to transfer, and then just touch it. Touch each of the wires. Don't need to be very long on these wires. They're kind of small. And voila. Now we'll solder it to the ESC. So this is four. Here... I tend to add a little bit more solder to the solder that's on there. The ground tends to be a little bit hotter, hotter, harder to solder. And the order is white is signal, PWM. There we go. One done. Except, started out the wrong one. How about that? So I said I was going to do four first, and instead I did one first. Silly me. Uh, you get the idea. Okay, so there's one. Two. You don't really need to use the wire strippers on these silicon wires, especially if they're low gauge like this. This fingernail will do. But if you do it wrong, you get that and it stretches. You see that? See that? I'm not sure you can see that. So that has stretched. That's not really great. So sometimes the wire cutters or wire strippers work well. Trying to save time and making a mess of things. <laughs> 